emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to part 9 of the Trumpeter U552 U-Boat. Uh, the video build from Ted, Ted at eModels, eModels.co.uk. Um, firstly, I must apologise if you've been watching these videos, there's been a bit of delay between part 8 and part 9. Uh, there's a couple of things that have happened, uh, but um, we're, we're on with part nine anyway. Uh, we're at the bench, you may notice that things are a little bit different. That's one of the things why there's been a delay, because I've moved house. So I've uh, got a temporary bench set up uh, and uh, able to uh, get back on with the video. Uh, anyway, what we're going to look at this time is these guys. The crew, I've got one. There he is. <laughs> there he is, the, the crew from the U552. There's a skipper. Well, uh, there's uh, this one. Uh, we'll see him in a minute anyway. We'll have a look at the crew, get some painted, I hope. See you in a moment. Okay, right, before we get on, I thought we'd uh, introduce you to the crew. This is obviously uh, the Herr Capitan, our leader of his team. And moving around are uh, some of the uh, watch keepers. Uh, I'll be out on the bridge wing. Um, then we go around and find some of the diesel engine room fitters. Ah, oh, there's the chef. And then we move on back onto the casing. Uh, this chap here, he's helping loading some of the torpedoes. And there's some of his comrades. There are 48 figures in this submarine. I'm sure as we look around and have a look at some of them, you'll see that uh, one or two are quite duplicated. Oh, there's a little hair on the arm of that one. I'll have to take that off. Not quite sure what he does. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, I think he's maybe one of the torpedo crew. Uh, some guy's having a rest there. Uh, he's in the crew quarters. As is that chap, maybe having his lunch. Uh, somebody there from the control room, I think one of the planesmen. Oh, sorry, bit of nudity. Oh, yeah, he's got his shorts on, never mind. Won't oh, disturb him. He's on his iPhone. And somebody deep in thought, I think. Uh, there's the navigating officer. And that looks like his bodyguard. Bit of a bruiser. And uh, now we come to somebody that maybe has a headache. And another guy here in his Nike shorts. Uh, likes to keep himself fit. Few stray hairs that they were taking off, and here we have some of the gun crew and the yellow life jackets. And there we go, back to the skipper. So that's the crew. I say 48 of them. We'll now go along and have a look how they are all painted up. Ah. Mystery on the cutting mat. Uh, right, uh, yeah, so we've got the crew. We need to paint them. What we're going to paint them with? Uh, first thing we need is some paint. Uh, yeah, well, I use this. Uh, this set here, it's the flesh paint set from 
uh, life color. Uh, yeah, I like them. I've painted, well, obviously you've seen all the, uh, the crew that I've painted. Uh, um, uh, I've not just done 148 scale, I've done one, uh, figures in 135th as well using this. Uh, now as, as we get down to 148 scale, I don't think we're too bothered about sort of uh, shadows on the cheeks uh, and under the eyes and chin and highlights on the nose and things like that. We will have a little go just to sort of... Uh, yeah, make the figures look a little bit better uh, but I like these they're, they're a nice uh, high pigment content paint uh, they really are thin uh, they're nice and thin and really go on without causing that thickness and build up of pigment especially on their small uh, figures uh, yeah as, as you get into the bigger range uh, of, of figures uh, this sort of size uh, there is a sterling David Sterling I think I can't see because he's black sprayed in black anyway yeah that's the sort of figure uh, getting into that that range you can use different pigments thicker pigments but uh, I think probably something like that um, would be painted more in ours but we're going to use these these are um, water based acrylics uh, and they're, they're really quite good so I'll show you how to use them uh, I might not be using them in the official approved way um, some people might end up shouting at this video you're not doing it right but this is my way uh, I think I produce a, an acceptable looking figure um, yep so we'll have a look at them uh, right so put them out the way what else do we need um, paint brushes uh, I've got a selection, I've just picked up a selection here. We might use uh, some smaller ones or some bigger ones. Uh, I think the biggest one we will use though is, I think this I think this is about a size 2. It doesn't actually say on it, it just says large brush. Uh, this is about a size 2. Uh, a, round, a nice round brush. Uh, so, so that. And then a couple of detail brushes or fine detail brushes with pointy tips. Uh, try and keep them nice and straight and clean I uh, use the, uh, a proprietary brush cleaner at the end of the day uh, that keeps them all nice and straight so we we'll use them uh, next yeah a wet palette uh, I'm sure you'll have all heard or seen of the wet palettes in use by other people uh, this is mine it's in a, an old plastic takeaway tub uh, it's just a deer cloth in the bottom uh, a wet J cloth uh, with a layer of baking parchment over the top that um, it's great to work from because when you're blending uh, and we'll do a little bit of blending within the uh, the next painting segment that we're going to do as you've already seen I've, I've done some in here as well uh, if you're blending if you make a blend of paint uh, and you want to leave it even overnight uh, maybe a couple of days you can come back to it and usually it's still sort of uh, all, all wet and usable still inside it to save your paint as well so if you if you always put your paint on a wet palette uh, it makes it go stronger because you, you think that you put your your paint onto a, a mixing palette and it'll dry up uh, before your painting periods over so yeah we'll use that we'll use that so we've done a bit in there already. Um, what else? Yep. Uh, pit mixing palettes. Yeah, I haven't got. Well, I do have one, but I can't find it. Since I've moved house, uh, I haven't a clue where it is. It's probably in a box somewhere. But what I do use is is these. Um, the tablet. You want my tablet used to come in? Um, for those of you that don't know, I spent a little bit of time in hospital, unfortunately, and I've come out with uh, and now uh, in a lifetime supply of tablets. So, yeah, um, I, shall, uh, I shall have a never ending supply of mixing palettes. Uh, Use are good. If you have pots of paint, never sort of apply direct from the bottle. Usually put it on a mixing palette or, or on some sort of receptacle, that's a good word, um, and mix up in there. Uh, especially with the Valero or the AK, uh, come in drop bottles, uh, squeeze a little bit out into there. And that's it. So, we, we, yeah, we use them, but I haven't really anyway. Um, some uh, cotton buds, 
really just for mopping up messes uh, if you splodge too much onto a figure on the face or anything like that a quick wipe being being water based quick wipe uh, and you hopefully recovered then you can start again well uh, that and as usual for cutting off sprues uh, sprue cutters uh, cleaning up uh, with knives and uh, oh, I thought I had some uh, sort of skinny sticks think that sort of thing uh, uh, going on yep yeah. and obviously something to clean your brushes gin no no it's not gin right we'll go on and get some painting done bye right yeah well here we are here's the guys here's them all this is from the side of the box it's the box art um, yeah it was a huge box so uh, as you know if you've been watching this I did cut the box down save the pictures and threw the rest of it away because it's a huge box just no way to keep it. Uh, it as we said it says there's 48 figures in the box some of them are duplicates uh, you, like you get two of these and two of them uh, two of these so some of them uh, I didn't really think were worthwhile well one painting all 48 figures painting that lot painting this lot once was enough uh, but to paint 48 of them um, yeah I don't really want to do all that so it does leave a few spares but it's up to you if you want to um, leave uh, some out or put some in do them all yeah you can fill your boat with them yeah uh, but uh, yeah you can have two cooks if you want oh, that's a cook no that's a cook that's a cook yeah uh, uh, yeah, but all the guys are there. Uh, inside the box, it comes with um, all the colour callouts and tells you what parts to go where. Um, it, yeah, but having a few extra figures does leave you the option of a few different heads, but they don't always fit, so you'd have to try them if you want to move a few heads around. Oops, that's a bit weird that did not move heads around. Um, but yeah, as I've said, uh, because uh, some of these guys are duplicates, yeah, you're going to have them looking like brothers or twins. Um, and also, it seems that Trumpeter uh, haven't cast every individual, individual, individually. That's a lot of individuals. Uh, yeah, it, it seems like the, uh, the head of this guy here might be the same header that's on that guy there so they won't look any different uh, there's uh, more call outs on the back as well uh, yeah sometimes the, the guy with a cap here has a striking resemblance to the guy here uh, so yeah uh, if you were placing them together yeah if somebody if somebody was looking too close I think well, I don't really, yeah, well you could just say they were brothers but never mind yeah so, so that's it so you just got to be aware that some of them uh, do look the same or they are the same people in fact uh, anyway that's a color call out it tells you on the top here uh, it gives you the recommended colors for Mr. Hobby, Viero, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol uh, where appropriate where there's um, appropriate colors available I've used some of them not all of them certainly haven't just used the uh, flesh color or what does it say? Uh, H44. Uh, yeah, it just says, just says up here, Mr. Hobby Flesh, Valero, I met Humboldt, just one one layer. Uh, yeah, if you wanted to do that, you could do that, just make them all one colour. But anyway, we'll get that out of the way. Uh, how do you figures come? Uh, obviously on a sprue. Oops, whacking the camera. Um, obviously on a sprue. Uh, which needs cutting off um, yeah you'll see I've uh, I've colored this lot on the sprue and uh, not often I do that uh, it's just I think I had some black primer left over in the airbrush so I thought I'd give these a, a coat while I was at it uh, but that's that's one of the sprues uh, the figures themselves are not the best of moldings um, probably done separately to the maybe, maybe they're done separately and brought in from a contractor uh, to go in the kit they're not the best of moldings they're a little bit soft but they're passable uh, so yeah so 
that use your use your cutters, cut them off, uh, and then assemble them. Uh, I won't bother showing you uh, how to assemble figures. Oops, uh, but this is what I've done. Right, let's get the camera zoomed in, and you can have a look at him. Here we are. Here's the guy that we saw before. Remember the the one that said uh, he had a headache. Here he is. Let's, let's get him out. There he is. That's him in his painted state. Uh, just relaxing. He's actually relaxing on the bed, um, on on his bunk, uh, or, or will be. Uh, this is him prior to being painted. Uh, the the white patches and things are just where uh, he's been cut off the sprue and cleaned up. Uh, but we're not going to bother too much about that. The, these are not going to be um, figures that I'll actually use in the boat itself because the duplicates. I'm just going to use them to sort of uh, show you how we go about uh, uh, painting them. Uh, first things first, what I normally do, assemble them. And then because they are quite small, uh, they're often difficult to sort of handle while you're being painted. So I glue them to uh, a bit of sprue just an old sprue just, just uh, glue them where they're not where the contact isn't going to be seen uh, they, they will cut or snap off quite easily uh, I'm trying to keep it in focus for you um, not that I know anything about being out of focus but uh, yeah just they, they, they just make it nice and easy easy to handle um, and uh, then when they're drying you can stick them in a piece of polystyrene or something like that so so whatever uh, but yeah here we go right let's get the first coat on I'll get some paint out and we're, we're ready to paint oh. oh yeah right we're almost ready to start painting um, a lot of these figures to get through um, just before we do go on a painting uh, the number of figures in the boat and the figure painting might put one or two people off. Um, you could still use the figures and I've thought of a way of doing that if you weren't perhaps into figure painting. Um, what I've seen when I've gone around museums and galleries and things like that is sometimes that the mannequins portrayed in uh, a scene are not so much uh, lifelike. They're, they're, just painted basic just I just thought it might be an idea um, if you didn't want to paint your figures uh, this one's red you could paint them in any color uh, I think the um, in the smaller scale um, Ravel you bought uh, the figures actually come blue um, and that plasticky type vinyl uh, figure that doesn't really take to paint and I think that's what they were intended for so that uh, your figure was actually just a representation of such uh, yeah if we bring him up we'll bring him into focus so you can have a look at him uh, all I've done with him is just give him a coat of um, black primer and then I've just given him a, a like a first coat of of red in this case and, and I thought that with just the black sort of underneath give it that sort of non-human type look but that's that's just an idea anyway uh, but what we're going to do get on with this guy uh, we'll give him his first coat so uh, just uh, drop him down and we'll get the first coat out of the way just give it a good shake uh, these are quite high pigment paints uh, so you need to make sure, excuse me, rattling in the background. Um, you need to make sure that the pigments are well sort of mixed within the bottle. Um, I don't, don't try and to take things out of the bottle with your paintbrush. It'll uh, ruin your paintbrush and your ferrule will be full of paint and you never get it out so so that's that's about it that's it oops it's just in there i need a little drop just for the time being 
just a, an old sprue to just clean up a little bit. And then with a the, with the size two brush, I'll bring him up, bring him back into focus, so it's not all done in the distance. Uh, I can focus this camera now. There we go, something like that. All we want to do with this one is just take some paint from the wet palette, just spread it about a little bit, and that's what your thumb's for. Uh, you could use your thumb just to make sure that you're thin enough and you're not going to go all over your figure with a great splodge. So just as you can see, it's a nice thin paint and it just goes over nice and smoothly. Don't worry about filling it in or blocking everything in. Just want a first coat and the black will help sort of give some natural shadows and things and then okay so I'll just get on and paint this figure up. All we're doing, we're just going all over the areas of the skin and just giving it the first coat in uh, flesh base. Okay, right, I'll get painting. There we are, a uh, little blotchy, uh, don't worry about that, um, don't worry about painting over his clothes or his shoes or anywhere else, we're just looking to get the first coat of uh, flesh base on and uh, that's all we need to do. It doesn't take long to dry now, uh, being an acrylic it'll be dry within, well I'll give it half an hour just to make sure it's hard and dry. You can blast it off, um, flash it off with a hairdryer if you wish, but uh, time to go put the kettle on and I'll have a cup of tea. It's up close, I forgot. See you in a moment. What? No hobnobs. Ah. Oh well, back to painting. Oh well, that's the second coat put on and he doesn't really look too bad in that. Uh, that's just the base flesh. Um, that one. If I find it, yeah. Flesh base, number one. And it doesn't really look too bad. You could perhaps leave him like that if you wanted to, just to coat this, and uh, you'd be sorted. But uh, I thought we'd show you how to put a few little highlights on him, just to fetch out a little bit more detail. Um, hopefully, you can see this, and we'll keep it close to the camera and the. the the workbench is actually a little bit out of focus so if I fetch things up what we've got in here now we've just got a touch over here of uh, flesh shadow um, we put it next to the flesh base because we're going to take our small paintbrush and just blend a little bit together because what we're doing is lifting this first colour and moving it over to the dark uh, colour but we don't want it to be too harsh we just want to tone it down you know we just want to darken it down a little bit just to bring out some of the the shadows now what we're going to do here this is where your thumb comes in as well uh, we could just take a little bit off on our thumb and then we can apply just a touch in the eyes Just try to get this to the right angle so you can see it. It doesn't look like there's much in there, but I assure you there is. And across his lips. Now this guy's got a 
beard. So we'll, be, we'll, we'll look at painting that in as well. Go back just a touch more. We'll go a little bit darker, I think. Just we could compare it on our thumb. Flesh on flesh. Uh, it's a little bit darker, I think. There. So we can now go under, we can have a look around the body and all the shadow areas. Oops, out of view. Uh, we can give just a touch in of shadow. Do that all over. It's not just the eyes. Take a little bit more paint. I appreciate, as I say, the, the Desk is a little bit out of focus because got it pulled in so you can see what's happening on the model. And then we can just put it down to centre, central, just touch it in. Now it may not look like there's much happening, but when it dries, it will be that shade darker and just give some definition to the skin. As I say in this 148 scale it's not going to be really a great sort of difference but it's there, we know it's there. Just in his legs as well, back of his legs. And Could just go in his eyes and quite dark, I think. When we're in 148 scale, uh, whites of the eyes, I don't think we'll bother with them at all. If you can do whites of the eyes on 148 scale, you're much better than me. So we're getting little bits of definition in there now, and the touches that we've given the creases and his muscles is adding a little bit of definition to him. Can do some down under his knees, just just a touch, just a line under his knees. Don't worry if it's a little bit too blotchy at the moment because what we'll do we'll go back over with the flesh base on a really really thin coat and that will blend everything in and bring it all back together so that's that bit done uh, next I'll go across and let this dry and then I'll go across it with a water, really watery flesh base. This bit here, we'll go back to this, use this again. Just really um, a translucent coat of that which will pull the, the shadows in and then we can look at some highlights. All right, let this dry and then I'll go and do that and it's looking a lot better already. All right, in a moment. Okay, what we've done here uh, we've now uh, finished all the, the shadow and you can see there's a, a bit more definition on this guy's legs and his, his arm. Uh, underneath the chin as well, uh, we've blended the, so the, the, the light flesh and the shadow as well. And if you see in his eyes, he looks a bit, this close up, he looks a little bit Frankensteinish. But I assure you, when he, he's back a little bit, uh, yeah. I, see if I can get it in focus when he's back here a little bit he does look a lot better uh, in fact uh, it's probably an idea that if you are painting figures like this is to uh, first of all get them back in focus and then paint them uh, using your camera uh, if you do, yeah anyway that's another matter but yeah it is looking a little bit better than he does before and he certainly looks a bit better from a, a distance. What we're going to do now, we're going to use some uh, uh, flesh 
light to do some highlights on him and this will really be the the last stage of the flesh painting for this for this scale of figure anyway uh, what we're going to do gonna just take a small brush a fine brush and uh, a drop of flesh light just in the in the in the uh, tray uh, just load the brush up not too much but and now once again just use your thumb just to take the excess off and what we're going to do here is we're just going to touch on the parts of the body that would sort of catch the light uh, over his eyebrows just over his eyebrows just a gentle touch not too much remember if it been these being water based acrylics if um, you do too much try to keep it in short if you do too much just uh, a q-tip just to uh, wipe it all off and start again uh, so there on his his brow bridge of the nose you can maybe just touch touch on the cheeks if you want depends how much you want to do really now we can go across here and we could this guy's going to be lying on his bed on his side like this so we could just touch your top on the top of his shoulder like this uh, use a little bit of water if you wish just wet the brush and then just blend it just blend it in just to give it a false impression of light hitting the subject so we can blend using using the water to blend now you see how the the highlights are just beginning to pick up we don't need too much of this and down on his knees just just a touch we could just dry that paint off and we could just touch it and just blend it just before it dries just touch and blend try, try moving up a little bit more and just blend it in that's all we really need to do uh, with this figure as I say it, this sort of isn't perhaps the the most accepted way of painting figures um, it might not be the correct way but it works for me uh, so just uh, just using the three paints out of a set of six from the uh, Valero sorry the uh, life color flesh paint set just using the three uh, one, two three and there's lots of infinite variations within this box uh, there's the six paints and as you can see what we've been doing in here is just blending them together just to sort of make him a little bit more acceptable uh, as I said this close up to the camera yes he does look a little bit Frankensteinish but I assure you when he's sort of a bit of a distance away he'll look a lot better um, after all these are just uh, an accessory to the to the submarine itself they are the crew yeah uh, but uh, it's a submarine that's taking centre stage and these are just to add a little bit of life to it so you want to make them all um, lifelike if not don't forget you can paint them in a non-lifelike colour uh, just as a, a representation of the people in the submarine uh, but that's it yeah go on and paint his clothes if you can find his mate over here uh, no I can't find him where's he gone oh. I think we've had a deserter. Anyway, he's his mate. Uh, just dress him, uh, dress him as you want. But uh, the suggestions are a white shirt, even white shorts. But I've just given them a little bit of colour. Um, painting the bodies. Here's uh, the guy. Once again, it's painted the same effect. He hasn't had his beard painted yet. Painted the same effect, just with a, the dark underneath the muscles on his chest and his stomach, just to give him a little bit of definition. It does work. Uh, once this guy's all painted up, once the sort of um, 
flesh and that have gone off his clothes so he will look a lot better. Uh, oh yeah, just before I finish, oh here he is. I found him. Yeah, so there we are. I could give him a coat of paint and a picture just before we finish. All right, uh, right. Thanks for watching. This is the end of part nine. Uh, I'll go and have a look now what I can get on and do for the rest of the submarine. Uh, it's all coming together. There's not a lot left to do. So uh, look out for part ten, which hopefully will come quicker than part nine did. So uh, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out at the end, just as I've painted him all up and finished him all off. And I'll see you in the next video. Bit of paint on that thumb. See you later.